Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we'll begin our chemistry curriculum for the uh, general secondary stage and uh, our first chapter is called the atomic structure. Uh, this chapter talks about the structure of the atom. First we have uh, some contributions of scientists who work on finding the structure of the atoms and we have like objections and knowing the stuff that they did and what did other people do in order to show their points and things like that uh, and finally we will know the modern point of view in the atomic structure so the chapter begins with saying that um, Greek philosophers thought about finding the structure of the matter. So they said that the matter can be divided into smaller fragments and these fragments can be divided into smaller ones and so on till we reach an undividable uh, uh, particle. They named this particle atom. In Greek, A means no and Tom means division. So it means that this particle doesn't divide. So this is the first point. In the fourth century before Christ, a philosopher called Aristotle said that any matter consists of four main constituents air, water, dust, and fire. Of course, this is not true. But he said so, and so people in this um, era where Aristotle lived so that cheap metals like iron and copper can be changed into work metals like gold just by changing the constituents of uh, just by changing the ratios of their constituents of air, water, dust and fire. Of course this was rejected when uh, science improved later on. So In the year 1661, a scientist called, called Boyle, he rejected this idea of Aristotle and he gave the first definition of an element. The element. He said that the element is a pure simple substance, pure simple substance that cannot be divided, no division, into simpler form, so that the element is the most simple form of the matter, it's a pure simple substance that cannot be divided by traditional chemical methods. The element is a pure simple substance that cannot be divided by traditional chemical methods. So Boyle was the first person to put a definition for the element. Somebody else called John Dalton John Dalton he carried a lot of experiments and made a lot of contributions to reach to the uh, structure of the atom and in the year 1803 he uh, made something called the atomic theory
Adamic theory in which he postulated means that in which in which he mentioned or in, in which he did use that the um, the atom is a simple undivided particle and that the atoms of, of an element is different from the atoms of any other element so each element has its uh, unique type of atoms and he said that each matter consists of a group of atoms that cannot be divided so this is the atomic theory of John Dalton which he announced in 1803 then in the year Experiments were carried out in order to see the, in order to prove the discharge of gases to electric um, charges. To see if gases can carry uh, can carry along them the electric charges, but they knew that gases cannot do that under a uh, normal pressure. But the gases can carry the electric charges under a very low pressure ranging from 0.01 to 0.001 millimeter mercury. So they put the gases under this pressure and they supplied them with a very high voltage 10,000 volts between the poles of a battery like that. So, when the gases were, were exposed to these two conditions, they noticed some rays which, which were produced from the negative or the cathode pole the negative pole is called the cathode pole, while the positive pole is called the anode pole. The cathode pole and these rays produced a fluorescent glow over the tube in which this, uh, these two poles were found, as if they had a thermal effect. So these rays which were produced are called cathode rays. So, what is the importance of this? The cathode rays were produced in this experiment whatever the type of gas were used or whatever the type of the material from which the cathode pole was manufactured. And this was a great evidence that the cathode rays are fundamental in any matter. So this is the point here. We are searching for the fundamental material of the matter. We said that uh, some people say that it's the element, some people say that it's atom, some people say that they are the cathode rays. There are some properties for the cathode rays. First, they move in straight lines Their particles are very fine in their structure, so they have a fine structure. They have a thermal effect, as I've just said. They made a fluorescent glow. And fluorescent glow is a glow that it has like a yellow color, three, four, they are affected by both electric and magnetic fields. As we have seen that they move with the field from the negative pole to the positive pole, so they are affected by the electric and magnetic fields.
Um, so this is it for today. The next time we will know some people who made um, models of atoms based on their thoughts, based on some fundamentals, and we will know if these fundamentals are right or wrong. And uh, this is it for today. The next time uh, we will talk about this and see you. Thank you for watching.